We have forecasted the biggest income drop on record, a 7% fall in living standards over the next two years, followed by 28 billion worth of public service cuts after 2025. And at the same time, we heard, um, well, actually, in the fine detail of the budget, there were some tax cuts for banks. We heard about deregulation of the insurance industry. And these should be especially concerning after we saw the instability of the finance sector earlier this autumn. So there wasn't enough in there for people really struggling with the cost of living right now. And this is the thing, because I've just read out a list there and quite often these it almost feels like jargon, like words, like, you know, it just kind of flies over your head. There's just so much there. But, you know, is this going to help the economy? Will it reduce inflation? People want to know. I mean, Jeremy Hunt has pledged to protect the vulnerable with this budget. Has he? Well, I would say no, he hasn't enough. You know, he has made some steps in the right direction, but they're, again, not enough when we're looking at the scale um, of the crisis we're facing. You know, he did point out that inflation is largely um, driven by those global energy prices. Um, So there was no recognition at the same time that if we have inflation going up, cost of food especially, and, and obviously our energy bills, as well as housing costs going up, people's wages need to increase if they're not going to go into the red. And there was not really a conversation on on the need for wage increases.